Geologists have long been fascinated with past extinction events and now it appears we're maybe headed for another one by the end of the century. This finding is based on a mathematical analysis of the five mass extinction events occurring within the past 540 million years. What do all of these mass extinction events have in common? Unusually high increases in global carbon, leading to a destabilization of practically every ecosystem, with a punctuated impact on oceans. Dr. Daniel Rothman, a professor at MIT's Earth, Atmospheric and Planetary Sciences Department took a mathematical approach to investigate why some carbon anomalies in the past have led to minor disruptions while others have led to mass extinctions. How we understand past mass extinction events however, before we jump into his findings, let's discuss how we understand past mass extinction events. Geologists use the rock record to understand what happened in the past. This can be done because practically every major change in our Earth and environment is preserved in the rock record. Rocks, specifically sedimentary rocks, are formed from the gradual deposit of sediment on top of each other, that sediment, buried through time with more and more sediment, lithifies into rock. This imparts a vertical timeline recording Earth's history in sedimentary rocks, going from oldest at the bottom to youngest at the top, normally. First, how do we know there were mass extinction events in the past? It's rather simple and only requires a sharp eye. If you understand how sediment is deposited on top of older sediment, what is called the law of superposition, you can walk through time as you look at layers and layers of rocks. What geologists do is take samples of rocks from the bottom of an outcrop a core to the top. They measure chemical traces and trace fossils. Much to early geologists' surprise, they stepped through time in the rock section, finding large numbers of plant and animal fossils, then suddenly nothing. Abruptly, in the rock record, there were no very little fossils. Then, gradually the number of fossils increased again as they moved forward in time, higher in the rock record. Well, that may be a coincidence and local changes that caused the large reduction in fossils. However, the more geologists measured rocks around the world, they found the exact same types of fossils, leading to an abrupt disappearance of fossils and gradual increase. This, they concluded, marked a global mass extinction event. How we link mass extinctions to changes in climate Noting the above finding, geologists concluded that there is substantial evidence of mass extinction events in the past. However, the sudden disappearance of fossils does not answer why that typically follows unexpected findings. To answer why this happened at that specific time, across the globe, geologists measure the chemistry of the rock just before and just after the extinction event. What they found is typically during these mass extinction events, there's a dramatic change in the carbon within the rock. When organisms form their carbonate shells, the shells impart specific signatures associated with the amount and type of carbon in the ocean, atmosphere. Humans do the same thing when we make our bones. We impart a carbon signature in our bones that timestamps the type and amount of carbon in the atmosphere while we are alive. Now, geologists found the missing key, the amount and type of carbon leading up to these mass extinction events, as measured in the same rock that shows these extinction events, is anomalously high. Finally, we have an answer to why, and it involves a rapid and large increase in carbon into our atmosphere. Why mathematics predicts a mass extinction triggering at 2100. Now that we have a good grasp of how geologists determined the existence of mass extinction events and the association with why they happened, we can be predictive. After all, that's a primary reason geologists study the past, to understand what the future holds. To mathematically predict the required input of carbon necessary to trigger a mass extinction, drive. Daniel Rothman analyzed 31 events in the past 542 million years. All 31 of these events are associated with changes in the amount of carbon in the atmosphere and ocean. However, only 5 of these events triggered global mass extinctions. 
Well, the difference may be the rate and amount of carbon increase in each event. Dr. Rothman plotted the total mass of carbon increase by the length of time for the increase and noticed a significant finding. It became evident that there was a characteristic rate of change that the system basically didn't like to go past, Dr. Rothman said of the comparison. The comparison found that most of the small carbon disturbances that did not trigger mass extinction events fell below the threshold. However, four of the five mass extinction events fell above the threshold. Dr. Rothman logically concluded that a mass extinction event is dependent both on the amount and speed in which carbon is added to the atmosphere and ocean. Therefore, a mass extinction event can be triggered by a rapid and extremely large input of carbon, similar to today, or a slow but much larger total amount of carbon added to the atmosphere. This allowed Drive, Rothman to compare the carbon rate, amount and speed, being emitted into the atmosphere today with the historical data in the figure above. One thing that makes a comparison difficult is even the fastest extinction events in the past saw a carbon increasing over thousands to millions of years. Nothing is on the timescale of hundreds of years we see today. Nonetheless, he found that given the current rate of carbon being emitted into the atmosphere, we will likely reach a mass extinction threshold by the year 2100. This is based on a total increase of 310 gigatons of carbon, which at current rates is expected to fall right around 2100. The upside. The effects of this mass extinction event will take a while to be fully realized. While we have increased the amount of carbon at unprecedented rates, it takes the Earth some time to equilibrate to the new conditions. This means we have thousands of years, a blip in the geologic record, for the mass extinction to fully be in effect. The downside. The basis of how long extinction events take to fully realize is based on past extinction events. And just as we discussed above, none of those previous extinction events saw carbon increase on the order of hundreds of years. So, long story short, we can't fully know what is in store for the future. As geologists, we look to the past to understand the future. Unfortunately, we're in a transformative time in Earth's history where things are changing faster than they ever have in the past. That makes predicting the future much harder, something that worries scientists and should worry you. Thank you.